hi friends and welcome back to the channel for another furniture makeover in today's video i'll be transforming this dresser and if you've been watching for a while you would have seen this in the background in the past few videos now i got this one for 25 dollars i believe it was on offer up and it's just covered in a bunch of stickers it's kind of peeling on the left side so I have just a little bit of work to do before we can get into the good stuff so if you're interested in seeing this transformation keep watching and we're gonna jump right into it as you guys know I always start by removing the hardware and then I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the cleaning process so for that I'm just gonna use my Dawn dish soap and my universal drill attachment and I'm just gonna give this piece a bath So moving right along, I'm using my heat gun and my putty knife, and I'm just trying to pry this wooden detail off of the bottom two drawers. I quickly learned that you just need to hammer some flathead screwdrivers in there and it should just pop right off. So after the first drawer, I became an expert and the second one I did in about 60 seconds. So the last thing that I want to do on this day is go ahead and sand down the top of this dresser. I can tell that the wood is absolutely stunning and I'm going for a two-tone look. So I'm starting with an 80 grit sandpaper, working my way up to a 120 and finishing with a 220. And um, you'll just have to keep watching to see what happens next. So on this morning, I'm first going to start with the two bottom drawers and then once I'm done sanding those, I'm going to do all of my scuff sanding. Okay, so without going all into the details, I'm just gonna do a quick Bondo repair. If you're not too familiar with this product, I use it in almost all of my videos, so you can check out any of the other videos for a more in-depth tutorial. But um, yeah, I just did that real quick, and then I go in the house to do the staining process, and this is where things took a left turn, and I'll just catch up with you guys tomorrow.
Good, beautiful morning, everyone. So I don't know if I said this in the voiceover, but I did not use wood conditioner and now my dresser is blotchy. It's a very rookie mistake, I know. So unfortunately, I have to change my design. <laughs> so I'm gonna be painting this dresser one solid color. And I had a plan, I had a color picked out all the things, but now that I'm not doing my original vision, I decided I don't wanna spend the money. And so I'm gonna try to use what I have. And this is the color that I'm gonna use. If you guys watched my texture dresser makeover, this is that color and it's a beautiful color. It's like a cream as you guys can see here. And um, hopefully I have enough and hopefully the paint is okay because it doesn't look like I, <laughs> I did a great job about sealing it back up. But um, exciting news, I purchased a second paint gun. So let me show you. So you guys know I've been really trying to figure out, I've been trying to figure out like a, a perfect method to my business and how I want to run everything but um I did try the gravity fed gun and I just find that this is my favorite gun I like this a lot I know that with it being I guess it's called siphon fed um that it does spray more paint than the gravity fed gun but it's just the one that I'm the most comfortable using I've figured it out I love that the um the gun is labeled so let me see so right here, like when I first, excuse the noise, when I first started, like I didn't, I wasn't, I couldn't get this right. And so the fact that it shows you, this is the fluid nozzle, that's the fan pattern. Um, and then there's that one other knob here. And this is, stands for siphon or pressure. So I just like that that's labeled. I love the durability of all the pieces. When you take this gun apart, it's simple to put it back together all the things you guys so i love that the only thing is that they do like you're gonna need some wrenches which is something i did not know but for this little thing there and then when you take the cap off you need a wrench for the one that's under there all the other stuff but that's another video for another day so anyways my old gun is going to be my primer gun and this is my new paint gun you guys know i love to use this primer you just got to make sure you have either like some ammonia or some alcohol or something to clean out the gun because this is not compatible with soap and water. And then for my windows, I did kind of tape them off all the way around so that I could have ventilation. My husband had to remind me of that because I didn't even think about ventilation. Um, so I did do that. So basically I'll pull the curtains up like I've done here and then I'll take this plastic and tuck it to cover off the curtains. So I have all four windows done like that. So I'll lift them up, wrap them around. I know my curtains are a little dirty, but that's not the point. So yeah, so that's the plan. I have four windows. I should have enough ventilation. I did like put the heater on the inside of the plastic. I'm not gonna run the heater while I'm working. The heater is actually closed, the vents closed and all of that. But once I'm done, I'll probably open that up. And yeah, all of the, the walls are plastic. It doesn't look like it, but yeah, there you can see. So I think I'm good to go. Please don't judge me, you guys. This is just a part of the process for me. Hopefully I'll get a workshop heater soon or something like that, but for now, this is it. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to come and give you guys a little bit more clarity about why I'm working inside. It's not because I'm, I'm bougie and I can't handle the cold. It's just the fact that my paint won't spray correctly in certain temperatures and so that's really what it's about. And last winter I really had to just put the business on pause and it was really sad and I told myself that this year it would be by any means necessary and I was looking into getting a heater but I would have had to call an electrician and it would have just been just un unfeasible for me right now. So. I asked my husband if he was okay with this and he said to go for it. So I appreciate him for his support and that's why I'm working indoors. So I know it won't always look like this um, and I'm glad that I have this video here to remind me of how far God is really gonna bring me. And I really hope that this encourages some of you watching. I know that the other alternative would be to paint with a brush indoors, but that's just not really my thing. So I'm just grateful that this worked out and 
it has so many benefits and I'm gonna share those with you guys in a few clips. Okay, so for this next step, this is absolutely a must. It's a game changer. You're gonna wanna sand your piece with a 400 grit sandpaper, and trust me, you have to try this. It takes your work to the next level. Um, and then from there, I wanna talk to you guys about my paint choice for today, because unfortunately, my paint was unusable. So I did have to make a purchase, and I didn't wanna spend $65 on a gallon. So I bought this quart of Deco Glow from Dunn Edwards. It's known for its exceptional film hardness, scuff, chemical, and block resistance. So I'll give you guys my opinion of this paint in a few clips, so you'll just have to keep watching. But in the meantime, I wanted to talk to you about those benefits. So the benefits of working indoors, one, I did not have any issues with bugs or anything landing in my paint. That was amazing. Um, two, I am nice and cold. I mean, <laughs> nice and warm. Another thing is that shoes are optional, as you guys may have seen. And last but not least, I get to listen to my worship music as loud as I want. Okay, so I want to give you guys a quick review of my thoughts, my initial thoughts um, of this paint. So first, we'll start with the sheen. It's currently only available in a semi-gloss. The other sheens won't be available until 2023. Um, so that's actually why I was hesitant to even try this paint in the first place, because I don't particularly care for glossy sheens. But I will say this wasn't too glossy for me. I thought it looked very similar to a satin finish, so that was okay with me. It does have a fast dry time, especially the dry to the touch time. That was very quick. Um, the hardness of this paint, I think, takes a little bit longer than what I'm used to. Um, I'm used to the hardness happening basically overnight, but what ended up happening is the next day I did come back and stage the dresser because I got excited and I wanted to see what it would look like. And I did notice a couple of nicks where I placed the staging decor so i was able to touch it up and then from there i did seal the top with a layer of polycrylic so that's my current opinion i think i would have to definitely give this paint another try before i can give you guys like a final thoughts but so far so good and this was only 15 dollars, so definitely cost effective So now that we're getting ready to get into this reveal, all I have to do is add the hardware and the drawer liner, but I wanted to give you guys one last reminder of where this dresser came from and let's get into this reveal. <laughs> 